In this example, we will look at how to use Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law to solve a bridge circuit. This arrangement of resistors shown here is called a bridge circuit. This middle resistor is forming a bridge between these two resistor paths. The procedure in applying KCL, KVL and Ohm's law to solve a circuit are shown here. Let's get started. The first step is to label branch currents. Recall that a branch is a path which connects two nodes. We can see that for this given bridge circuit, the 40 volt independent voltage source and the 5 ohm resistor are in series. They carry the same current. Thus, we can label this branch current as I1. We can label this branch current as I2 and this branch current as I3. We can label this branch current as I4. This can be done in any direction. Suppose we assume this direction for I4 and then there are two branches remaining here and here. So let's label this I5 and this one as I6. The next step is mark voltage polarities across resistors assuming the labeled branch currents. So here for the 5 ohm resistor I1 is entering the resistor at this end and leaving the resistor at this end. So the end where the current enters is higher potential and the end where the current leaves is at lower potential. So this process is to be repeated for all the remaining resistors. So we obtain the following voltage polarities plus minus plus minus plus minus and plus and minus. Now we need to identify loops to apply Kirchhoff voltage law and nodes to apply Kirchhoff current law. In this problem setup we have six unknown variables. So these are I1 I2, I3, I4, I5 and I6. Thus we need six equations in order to be able to solve for these values. So let's define a loop A here. So let's define a loop A. We can also define another loop here B and then we can define a third loop here C. So recall that a loop is a path which starts and ends at the same node. Also we can identify the following nodes. So this is the same node, uh, it's node X. So these two points are the same node and we can identify this node Y and then this node Z. Now the problem setup is complete. Uh, the next step is to identify, we have identified the loops and now we can start applying Kirchhoff voltage law to each loop. Recall that Kirchhoff voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero and we use a positive sign for voltage drop. So for loop A, let's start here we can see that I1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So the first term is written with a minus sign. Next we have a voltage drop going from plus to minus and using Ohm's law the value of this voltage drop is 5I1. Next is another voltage drop going from plus to minus. So this is plus 100 I2 and then this is the last voltage drop going from plus to minus. So this is 40 I5 is equal to 0. Let's do the same for, for loop B. So starting here plus to minus is a voltage drop. So what we get is 125 I3. Next we are going from minus to plus. This is a voltage rise. So this is minus 25 
I4 and then we have another voltage rise going from minus to plus so this is minus 100 I2 is equal to 0. Repeating the process for loop C starting here we have 25 I4 and plus to minus another voltage drop so plus 35.6 I6 and going from minus to plus is a voltage rise so minus 40 I5. So thus applying Kirchhoff voltage law to the three loops we have obtained three equations. We still need three more equations so this is done by applying Kirchhoff current law to nodes X, Y and Z. Recall that according to Kirchhoff current law sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving a node. We can see that at node X I1 is entering I2 and I3 are leaving thus we get I1 is equal to I2 plus I3 at node 4 and node Y I5 is leaving and I4 is leaving only I2 is entering so what we get is I2 is I4 plus I5 and then at node Z we have I4 and I3 are entering and I6 is leaving. So what we get is I6 is I3 plus I4. Thus we obtain six linear equations which can be solved uh, to obtain the values. Using a scientific calculator we can program these uh, six linear equations and solve to show that the current values are obtained as follows. Thus the obtained values are I1 is 0.5 amp, I2 is 0.275 amp, I3 is 0.225 amp, I4 is 0 0.025 amp, I5 is 0.25 amps and I6 is also 0.25 amps. Now we can determine the power associated with the voltage source. So the power associated with the voltage source is the product of the voltage which is 40 and the current which is I1 and we need to use passive sign convention to decide the sign of this power calculation. Since I1 is entering the terminal marked minus, we use power is minus VI. So this is written with a minus sign. And substituting the values, this gives I1 is 0.5. So this is minus 20 watts. The negative sign indicates that the independent voltage source is generating power in this circuit. We can verify the solution using LTSpice. This is the bridge circuit constructed in LTSpice. Note that in LTSpice it is not possible to rotate resistors at a 45 degree angle. Thus this is the same bridge circuit but the resistors are placed horizontally or vertically. By running this simulation and bringing the cursor over the independent voltage source we can see that the power dissipation is minus 20 watts which confirms the solution. This example demonstrates that while it is possible to solve any circuit using KCL, KVL and Ohm's law, the complexity of the solution grows quite rapidly. For instance, it's not possible to solve these six equations by hand and a computer program or a calculator is needed to solve such a large number of linear equations. Thus in practice mesh current method or node voltage method are used when solving circuits.